Next, I'd like to introduce one of the keynote speakers of the Go Green Expo, Mariel Hemingway, the granddaughter of the late great author Ernest Hemingway. At the age of 13, Mariel starred in the film Lipstick and four years later earned an Oscar nomination for her role in Woody Allen's film Manhattan. Mariel is not only an actress and model, but she is a yoga instructor, mother of two teenage girls, and one of the leading voices for holistic and balanced living. She's the author of two books and a third that is coming out this year. Welcome, Mariel Hemingway. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Sure thing. Now, if you can tell us about what motivated you to write your books, the first one being Finding My Balance Mm -hmm. and the second one, Healthy Living from the Inside Out, Uh, What motivated you to write these books, which, of course, have in common a very important topic that affects us all, and that is healthy living? Yeah, well, the first book, Finding My Balance, is really, um, it's kind of, it's it's a very personal journey. It's, it's, It's an autobiography, but it wasn't because I thought, oh, wow, I'm such a fantastic Hollywood person with such an amazing life that I need to share all my you know, all my dirty secrets. Because <laughs> I'm actually quite a boring celebrity. But um, the reason why I wrote that book is because um, because uh, finding my balance, I, I take yoga postures and I let, I, I describe them and I let each posture uh, lead me into a story about my life. And it's really mm. about the journey of self-discovery and understanding myself through my body and how it moves and understanding like the family that I came from and you know, all the different things that make me who I am. Um, so I wrote that book almost as a, as, a, as a way to come to terms with this family that I grew up in, which was a wonderful family on one hand and also, you know, an extremely messed up family like most families right. kind of are. Right. And, you know, the dysfunction <laughs> was, you know, pretty palpable. And, and those things said, you know, I mean, I have used different, practices, my yoga practice, my spiritual practice, food, exercise, um, and um, silence, meditation practices Mm -hmm. as a way to understand me. And in in doing that, um, in doing that first book, it was such a it's such a powerful experience for me because I really, I wrote it like like I was writing in my journal. Mm. And um, I sent it off to somebody to to type and transcribe and just pretended like I wasn't really writing a book. And when it came out, it was just this powerful trans- transformation for me, and it led me to realizing that, that I had a lot of tools that I needed to share with people on how to get healthy themselves, but that it's very personal. It's not one size fits all. You know, there's not a diet that suits everybody. There's not a way of moving that suits everybody. You know, mm-hmm. yoga doesn't suit everybody. It, there's a certain kind of silence that may suit one person and not another, mm-hmm. and there's a way to make your home. So that's what led me to write healthy living from the inside out, which is about home food, exercise, and silence, and how those four things are four cornerstones to a healthy and balanced life. Oh, that's fantastic. We do talk a lot on Healthy Planet, Healthy Me about yoga, it seems, more and more coming into this uh, age of Aquarius and um, Mm -hmm. going through, you know, this transformation, which sounds like um, uh, you talk about quite a bit in Finding My Balance, your first book, which I hear great things about, as well as uh, your your second book, Healthy Living from the Inside Out. Really enjoyed that. Um, You have a book coming out this year. Can you tell us about that? I do. Well, because of Healthy Living, Everybody's obsessed with food, <laughs> and so they're like more. Re- I have some recipes in Healthy Living from the Inside Out, but I didn't have a lot. And one of the one of the funny things that my really close friend always says to me, she's also my she was also my assistant for many years. She mm-hmm. goes, "The weirdest thing is everybody asks me what you eat." I'm <laughs> like, "What? <laughs> oh, they ask me what you eat." And so I decided that after Healthy Living, that I would write a, write a cookbook. Uh-huh. I gr- and, and there's a lot of different reasons for that as well. I grew up in a real foodie household, and if you've read any of my grandfather's work, yes. you'll see that he loved, he loved food, and my family loved food. My mother was a cordon bleu 
uh, chef, you know, she was sent to Cordon Bleu by my father who had grown up in Paris and didn't want a wife who was just cooked American food. I mean, it was, we were, we were food snobs at our house. Incredible. And we lived in Idaho where nobody ate anything but, you know, jello. Mm-hmm. So it was an interesting <laughs> sort of way to come into food because food was such a big part of our lives. But what I realized was, you know, food was a way to love yourself in the wrong kind of way as a child, whereas food has become ritual and nurturing and healing for me as I've gotten older. And so I, I moved into writing this book, Mariel's Kitchen Cookbook mm-hmm. um, is what it's called. And um, it's, it's about, you know, food that's seasonal and um, hopefully you'll buy organic or at least um, sustainable produce. Right. And locally grown as much as possible. So it's about getting that awareness that that our health begins, you know, our health and our and our understanding of the vi- environment actually begins within ourselves. Right. It begins with how you treat your body, how you eat, how you how you move, how you keep your home. You know, it's all these mm-hmm. things are actually really important. And usually books come out and they're separate. You know, we've got the diet book, we've got the this book the meditation book and the yoga book. and I put them together to say, to create a lifestyle mm-hmm. of change. And then the cookbook is just sort of an extension of that lifestyle. And, and it's really, they're great recipes. They're super easy. And I wanted to show that healthy food didn't have to be like, oh God, you know, <laughs> I'm being healthy. I have to leave out this, leave out that. Because right. the, re- the recipes are completely gluten-free. They're sugar-free. There's no fake anything. It's about real food for real people that tastes really, really good and that's simple to make. Because I think people want to be healthy and they want to make good choices, but they don't know how. They don't know how, and, and not knowing how means it's not as convenient until we retrain ourselves. Exactly. And the thing about it is, the truth of the matter is, really good, simple food needs to be messed with as little as possible. You do the least amount to good quality food. And then the ritual in eating it becomes so special because we've lost a lot of ritual in this country just because we move so quickly. You know, Mm -hmm. we throw things in microwaves and we pick up fast food and we do all these things that have we've we've disconnected to our roots to the environment. So that's what that's why I'm you know I'm speaking at Go Green Expo. It's like I make that leap that says, and it's not such a leap. The only way that you can get in contact with your environment and really get what it means to you is to really be in touch with how it's affecting the inside of your body mm. and your mind and your spirit. It's, it's a direct effect that it has. So true. And and the balance that you're talking about is so important. And I think that I, I know myself personally um, have always been on a journey to eat healthy since I was uh, a teenager and, and even before. Um, but just the effect, how much better we feel when we eat live, even raw food, organic food, food that has, you know, full of nutrients, how that makes us feel. Our brain is sharper. Um, it just affects us in so many wonderful ways. And I really believe that we're in a time with a new president who has so much amazing, you know, dream for so many amazing dreams for this country to, to really get out there and, and, and change the way that we are as Americans and the way that we consume to consume different kinds of, you know, products and things right. and and to change the way we view the world so and, and to have a more ecology conscious mind without looking like oh you know we're we're crazy tree huggers it's not about that it's about it's about our you know our planet is the you know our our body is our first temple and our planet is our second temple absolutely and we need to preserve it for ourselves for our children for their children it's corny. It's said over and over again, but it's absolutely the truth. Okay, great. So everybody, come on down and get green with Mariel Hemingway, and um, we'll certainly have you back on the show when we can have a little more time with you, especially uh, when you're... Well, yeah, well, the new book comes out in May, so so I'll come, I'll come back. Excellent. Appreciate it, Mariel. Be well, and keep up the good work. Okay, bye.